Hello, so today we are doing problems for this contest, weekly contest 169. The first problem is find any unique integers that sum up to zero. And so the problem says, um, if we have an integer n, and we want to return any array containing any unique integers, such that, they are, such that these um, integers add up to zero. And so, for example, for n equal to 5, um, we can return these five numbers. So n means that the number of num uh, the number of integers that needs to be in the array, but the additional constraint is that the sum of the array has to be equal to zero. For n equal to three, you can just take minus take minus one, zero, and um, and one, right? And so, how can we how can we approach this? So the first, there are actually three ways three different ways to look at this problem. Um, so the first thing that I can start with is, well, what we can do is a simple thing, which is just, you notice that for even numbers, if, if n is even, what we can just do something very simple, just take the negative numbers, take half of the n divided by 2, from 1 to n divided by 2, uh, as positive number and, f and the same numbers as negative and there's some they c will cancel each other out and so for example if I have let's say n equal to 2 what I can do is just start from 1 to n divided by 2 which is 1 so just take minus 1 and take the same number uh, but positive to cancel it out for n equal to 4 n divided by 2 is 2 so go from 1 to 2 which means 1 to 2 positive and do the same numbers negative now the only now when it's even and when it's odd then um, we can do add, do something slightly different to just take the same number n minus one um, and then just add zero so that because zero wouldn't change anything so the sum would still be zero and the number of integers would be five right So the way to <coughs> so the way to think about this uh, basically, as we, we just need to generate the numbers from z one to n divided by two, uh, positive and append them to the negative values of the same uh, range and just add zero if n is odd. And so pretty much what we can do here is just okay declare the final result here that we will return and then go for. Um, the range from uh, basically 1 to n divided by 2, which is what we did here in the example. So from 1 to n divided by 2, and so in Python that need to be n divided by 2 plus 1. And then we need to append uh, both minus i and i so that they cancel each other out. And if n is odd, and so that would mean this is different than 0, we can just add uh, 0 like this. And that's pretty much it, so let's run this. Okay, looks good, let's submit. Okay, so that works. Another way to check odd using just uh, binary operations is just doing, which is a little bit faster, but not that much, so we can do it that way. Um, and this should pass. Um, okay, so let's submit. Okay, so that passes. And uh, another different uh, method of... So this is the first method. Another way we can do this is we can just generate the numbers from 1 to n minus 1. So basically all the numbers 1 to until n minus 1. And now we have n minus 1 numbers, right? And then we could just to cancel all these out can just take the sum, so call this a, the array a, and just take the sum of a and put minus one so that it can cancel all of them out. And so it would be just pretty much just a plus an array containing this. And that way this will cancel out a so that the sum of the entire array is zero. And we would have n elements because a is n minus one element. And then we are adding one element, so we would have n elements. And so that's pretty much would be taking a to be the range from 1 to n minus 1. And to reach n minus 1, we need to put n as the end. And to get a list, we need to do it like this. And then we can just return 
that plus minus sum of a. So that it can cancel out and become 0, and the length can become n. Now, we don't need to distinguish add or even here, because this number would be, from 1 to n, it would be an even number of elements if n was add, and then we'll add 1, and it will be add. And the similar thing when n is even, right? And so that's pretty much it, so let's run this. And submit it. Okay, so that passes. Um, so another way to solve this problem is to think about um, just generate all the s different cases and see if we can find a pattern. So for n equal to 1, um, we can just give 0, right? The sum is 0 and the number of elements is just 1, right? For n equal to 0, we can just s give the empty list, right? The, the length is 0 for n equal to 2. Uh, we can just have minus 1 and 1, right? They cancel out to 0 and the length is 2. For n equal to 3, we can have uh, minus 2, 2, and we can have 0. And so the length is 0, uh, the length is 3, and the sum is 0. For n equal to 4, what we can do is take basically minus 3, take minus 1, 0, 1, and 3. And that's uh, sorry, without zero. So that's four elements and the sum is zero, right? For n equal to five, we can do minus four, minus two, zero, two, and four. And you can see this is five elements and can they cancel out to be some zero. And so you can notice the pattern here is basically doing the range from minus n minus 1, right? That's what we did for 5. We, take, we, to, we took n minus 1, which is 4, and we did minus 4. Same thing for 3. Minus 3 here, we did n minus 1, which is 3, and we did minus 3, and then we, we go all the way to n minus 1, but every time we increase by, by, by 2. Because here, if you look, minus 2, we start from n minus 1, minus n minus 1, which is uh, minus 2, and we increase by 2 to get 0, then we increase by 2 to get 2. Here we start from n minus 1, which is 3, so minus 3. We add 2, we, give, we get minus 1, we add 2, we get 1, we add 2, we get 3. Here we start from n minus 1, which is 4, so minus 4. We add 2, we get minus 2, we add 2, we get 0, we add another 2, we get 2, add another 2, we get 4. So you could see this is the idea of the of the solution, right? And so let's just implement that. So in Python, we have a function range that does exactly this for us. So range, we give it the start, right? And then we give it the end, and we give it the step, right? Um, and so the start here for us is just minus n minus 1, right? And the end is... Well, we want to stop at n minus 1, but we want to include n minus 1. And so to include n minus 1, we need to stop at n here, because it will stop at the, just the previous value, which is n minus 1. And then the step is 2, and that's pretty much it. Now, just to make this a little bit easier to read, we can enter the minus, and so we have plus 1 here, and we can just put 1 here instead, and we have from 1 minus n to n, and increased every time by 2. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'll submit. Okay, so that's it pretty much. So we saw there are three ways to solve this problem. Um, and all of them are open, essentially. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so thanks for